flight speed. The second umbilical tower has backed away. On April 7, 2007, Soyuz TMA-10 launched two of the Expedition 15 crew, Oleg Vikatov and Fyodor Yurchikin, along with space tourist Charlie Simoni, atop a Soyuz FG launch vehicle from Bankanor Cosmodrome. To the International Space Station. Soyuz has cleared the tower. Pitch and roll program initiated according to flight controllers. Soyuz headed on the proper trajectory and azimuth for its two-day chase to reach the International Space Station. Really well. Load in order. Good. First stage performance reported. The Soyuz delivering 102 tons of thrust from its four boosters and single core engine. Norm. Everything is in order on board. Vibration increasing. Copy. 40 seconds into the flight, roll and pitch program reported to be nominal, according to uh, Russian. Vehicle officer, it was visually confirmed as well. After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, Soyuz TMA-10 docked to the Nadir port of Zarya on April 9, 2007. Flight engineer Sunita Williams was the first Expedition 15 crew member to arrive on station, when on December 11, 2006, she docked aboard Space Shuttle Discovery on STS-116. She participated in Expedition 14, until Expedition 15 Commander Yurchikin assumed command of the station after their arrival. Upon their arrival to the ISS, Simonyi said that it is amazing how it appears from the blackness of the sky. It was very, very dramatic. It was like a big stage set, a fantastic production of some incredible opera or modern play. That's what I was referring to when I said I was blown away. We are expecting some of you here on the ground. 30, we give a command for undocking. We are ready. On April 21st, 2007, Simonyi returned to Earth aboard Soyuz TMA-9 with Mikhail Tayurin and Michael Lopez Algeria, who had spent seven months on the station and following 11 days of ISS handover operations. On April 26, 2007, NASA announced that Williams would return to Earth on STS-117, flown by Space Shuttle Atlantis, instead of STS-118 as originally planned. Second umbilical retracted. On May 12, 2007, Progress M60 launched on a Soyuz U carrier rocket from Site 15 at Bankinor Cosmic. Three, two, one, turbo pumps up to flight speed, maximum thrust, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 60th Progress resupply vehicle en route to the International Space Station. Structural parameters reported to be normal. Good roll, pitch and yaw program initiated. After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, Progress M60 docked with the aft port of the Svezda module. Will be retrieving that there were two EVAs conducted on Expedition 15. The first occurred on May 30th, 2007, and took 7 hours and 25 minutes, where they conducted repairs to the station. The second EVA was in June on the 6th, 2007, with Yurchikin and Kotov spending 5 hours and 37 minutes outside. On June 8, 2007, Space Shuttle Atlantis launched STS-117 from Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center. 
The launch of STS-117 marked the 250th orbital human spaceflight. get real quiet after those solid rocket boosters leave us. Those are only with us about two minutes and five seconds. They get us to 150,000 feet in Mach 5. And here you can see right after our main engine cutoff, about eight and a half minutes into flight, uh, we jettison the external tank. Right away, uh, Pat and Danny get uh, going in a, in a hurry to try and videotape the uh, external tank for uh, downlinking uh, that imagery to the uh, control center. After reaching successful orbit, the crew used the orbital boom sensor system to inspect the shuttle for any damage sustained on launch. The data we get reviewed as they approach the station. Hey, the uh, little bit of terror we had in the Ohms plank, and he got a good shot for the emission control using the uh, camera on the robotic arm. We got that downlink in a hurry. Flight day two, we took the uh, uh, OBSS, the survey, the, the uh, boom that we used to do was survey the uh, leading edges of the wings, make sure we didn't get any other damage during uh, ascent. And here we're uh, at the end of flight day two, about five and a half hours later of, of that survey, we uh, go ahead and put the uh, OBSS boom back in its place. Then here you can see as we approach, if we get a first visual on the space station at about uh, six miles out and um, as we get closer in, it gives us the opportunity to do a, a pitch maneuver and allows the on-orbit crew of the International Space Station to shoot uh, various uh, photography and uh, video of the underbelly of the orbiter also to verify that uh, the launch was indeed clean and that we had no uh, secondary damages associated with that launch. And here you can see the, uh, it, it's, it's a pretty awesome sight coming to the space station seeing all this uh, hardware hanging out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, certainly is very impressive, but uh, it just, even as you get in closer, it just doesn't look right. Uh, as we approach our final phases of docking, uh, it really becomes very impressive and you realize that uh, things are really going to happen very quickly. And uh, here, this is not exactly to, to the proper speed, speed it up a little bit to kind of make things go, but you can see the... After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, Atlantis docked the pressurized mating adapter 2 on the ISS while the two spacecraft were flying 220 miles or 350 kilometers above the northeast coast of Australia is to open up the hatches and see our crew members, new crew members inside. There's uh, Fyodor, Oleg, and Sonny. And needless to say, all of us were happy uh, to finally get to this point. Atlantis delivered to the International Space Station the second starboard truss segment, the S3S fourth truss, and its associated energy systems, including a set of solar arrays. Following docking, pilot Lee Archambault and mission specialist Patrick Forrester used the shuttle's Canada arm to grapple the S3S4 truss, lift it from its berth in the payload bay, and maneuver it for a handover to the station's Canada arm too. After hatch opening, SUNY Williams used the Canada arm too to take the truss from the shuttle's robotic arm and align it in position. The installation paved the way for the start of the spacewalk planned for that same day. After venturing out of the Quest airlock into space, Mission Specialists Riley and Olivias released launch restraints on the four solar array blanket boxes, which housed the folded solar arrays. They made final attachments of bolts, cables, and connectors, and began preparations for the activation of the truss. The two spacewalkers rotated the array canisters into their normal position for deployment on the next day. The start of the spacewalk was delayed for an hour after the station temporarily lost attitude control when the station's control moment gyroscopes went offline. EVA-1 marked the 84th devoted to the ISS assembly and maintenance. It was also the fourth for Riley and the first for Olivia's. And uh, it was a beautiful sight to see these things uh, come out on uh, flight day five. We got both arrays are about 240 feet uh, long and uh, 
Of course, all the help we had from folks on the ground, you see here, uh, Kelly Beck was a flight director on that flight. Once we had those deployed, it was time to retract uh, the 2B array, and it was a real team effort also. You saw Sonny was uh, running the computer, CJ was kind of running the show with the cameras and the microphone, and then uh, we had JR and Danny, or excuse me, on this first one on EBA2, it was Swanee and myself were out there. This is uh, some of the helmet video where we had to cut a leader off before we could fold this thing up, a spring that had broken loose. And here was the team inside, JR, running the show as IV. We got a little bit more retracted on that second e EBA than we thought. Uh, there we are uh, at the end of that particular portion. I'm on the boom on the right, and, and Swanee's there on the mass canister. Uh, anyway, we're going to finish that up on EBA 3, and there's JR on the arm, this time on the left, and Danny on the mass canister. And they spent several hours out there, and as you can see, their work was rewarded by the fact that we were able to completely retract that solar array. Uh, there's CJ making some of the final calls, and there's uh, Sonny very happy with uh, what we were able to accomplish. Flight Day 8 was dedicated to the mission's third spacewalk to repair the thermal blanket on Atlantis and assist in folding up a solar array on the space station. And then we put him on the uh, shuttle arm with uh, Brew and Swanee flying that, and we sent him out there. Here's some of his helmet video uh, as he gets out in place and gets ready to fold that piece of blanket down. He did a great job. The first thing he did was push it in place, and then using that stapler that you saw him practicing with inside, uh, did a great job of uh, using that surgical stapler. Uh, there's Megan MacArthur and uh, Kelly down in the control room and Keith uh, giving instructions and uh, checking on things. Once he had it stapled, Danny used some pins to keep it in place on re-entry. Uh, there was the team inside, uh, CJ and Brew, and then myself as IV. Uh, while, he was, uh, while Danny was working on that, we had JR busy working on another piece of equipment just above the uh, shuttle. So you could see he was just feet away from us outside uh, and he was installing an H2 vent. And this was the uh, external portion uh, of a system that was going to allow us to use an oxygen generator, uh, which we'll need as we go to a crew of six. Uh, right after he had completed that, Clay and Sonny got the work inside in the lab and hooked up the rest of that uh, portion internally so that the oxygen generator would work. Uh, we moved on to EBA 4 on flight day 10. That was uh, Swanee doing some work. There we are both bringing in a uh, keel pin as we clean the uh, path that the MT or the mobile transporter would move along uh, that path with a robotic arm. So we, uh, at the end of EVA-4, had completed all the tasks that the crew had gone up to do, and it was time to come in. That was a great day. It was uh, Father's Day, a Sunday afternoon, and uh, we had accomplished the EVA mission that we had gone up to do, so we were uh, very happy with that. EVA-4 was the 87th spacewalk in support of station assembly and maintenance and the 11th spacewalk completed in 2007. It was the 59th out of the ISS and the 36th out of the Quest airlock. On June 19, 2007, the hooks and latches holding Atlantis and the ISS together were released, and the shuttle undocked from the station as the two spacecraft were flying above New Guinea. Pilot Lee Archambault took control of Atlantis shortly after undocking and fired the shuttle thrusters to move 450 feet in front of the ISS before starting a full fly around. Crew members on both the ISS and the shuttle got photos of both spacecraft as Atlantis performed the fly around and once it was complete, the shuttle left the vicinity of the station complex and headed for home. So a few item entries we have to type into the uh, shuttle computers with the uh, jets. And here's, uh, here's the uh, station looking nice and symmetrical, as I mentioned earlier. We uh, even had it flying behind us for a while. I could see it back there clearly. So we did a little yaw uh, manual maneuver of the uh, shuttle to kick it across the tail so everybody could see it. Here we are, the burn kicking off. That's a timer floating in the middle. Now watch what happens when that burn kicks off. It just accelerates from the uh, dual arms engine, the orbit burn. And uh, then the next thing we know, we're hitting the atmosphere. You can see a little bit of the uh, plasma 
uh, in the overhead windows here as Pat's uh, shining a camera on the cockpit. Okay, here's the Mach meter. I was telling you you're going to see this for sure. There's uh, going out 24.99 and 25.0, so that's it. Already we can feel the uh, gravity coming in. That's about 0.6 G, so it's not falling at 1 G yet. And before we know it, we are looking at the uh, deserts of California and making a uh, right hack into runway uh, 22 at Edwards. Atlantis landed at Edwards Air Force Base on June 22, 2007. Shuttle flies very nicely. It's very much like our uh, shuttle training aircraft. When you roll out on final, it uh, feels very similar. Fly about uh, 300 knots on final, and then uh, Brew put the gear down about 300 feet, just a little higher than that. My wife made a comment that she thought he waited a little long on that, but it was, we checked the numbers, it was perfect. Came in uh, 300 on final, shooting the touchdown just below uh, 200 knots. And then Brew put the uh, shootout, and we did the uh, derotation. It was a hot day at Edwards when we landed. It had been a, uh, 107 degrees the day before, and it was approaching that uh, by the time we got out there. Rolling out on final, of course your helmet, uh, you've been up there floating around for a couple weeks and your helmet uh, feels, even your head feels pretty uh, heavy by that point. So we brought it to a stop, trying to get it right on center line. Doesn't matter if you land on center line. Atlantis, wheel stop. Atlantis, Houston, copy wheel stop, welcome back. Progress M59, which had been docked to the Pierce module for five months, undocked on August 1st, 2007, and burned up in the atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean. On July 23rd, 2007, EVA-3, the final EVA of Expedition 15, was conducted by Yurchikin and Anderson, totaling seven hours and 41 minutes. On August 2, 2007, Progress M61 launched from Site-15 at Bankanore Cosmodrome by a Soyuz U carrier rocket. After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, the spacecraft docked with the Pierce module on August 5th. Progress M61 carried supplies to the International Space Station, including food, water, and oxygen for the crew, and equipment for conducting scientific research. <laughs> 